Hi, this is Andrew Smith. I'm a character artist in the game industry, a college instructor, and I run artbysmitty.com. Uh, you guys may have seen my previous video, the Substance Painter 101, uh, working with Brutus and working with ZBrush, 3ds Max, and Substance Painter to get your bakes going, and a quick little 101 on how to start using Substance Painter. Um, anyways, let's take a look at Substance Painter, just look at Brutus, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to take Brutus and these textures and we're going to get them working in 3ds Max. Uh, and rendering out in V-Ray. You can see some of my you know, initial results here. Uh, we've got the metalness working, uh, and we've got the uh, roughness working, and the base color, and the normal map, uh, and rendering in V-Ray looks very, very similar to what we get in Substance Painter. So let's go ahead and set that up. Uh, I'm gonna come back into V-Ray, and I'm gonna go to my scene, which has got a simple light. I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, you know, file new, don't save this. And uh, just note, guys, that I've got my safe frames and viewport clipping turned on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and import the same model that I was using in Substance Painter. It's bakeme.fbx. Uh, I'm going to go to geometry and make sure smoothing groups are on. And I want to make sure that my units are the same. Okay, so this guy looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create... Um, I guess we're going to just go to materials, general, and we're going to be using a physical based material in 3ds Max. And this is what we have, so let's go ahead and right click and say assign material to selection. Uh, next up, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to drop in an ambient light. And this ambient light source, I'm going to drop the intensity down to something like 0.1. And the color, I'm going to tint um, blue ever so slightly. Uh, just to kind of mim mimic the uh, the color of the atmosphere, uh, so we should get something very 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 dark like this, and that's really all I'm trying to achieve with an ambient light source. Just I'm trying to lighten up the shadow areas, so we don't have any super black shadows. Next up, I'm going to drop a simple area light in. Uh, obviously, with area lights, the larger the light source, the softer. And guys, this. This light source can be wherever you want. Uh, with area lights, the larger the light source, the softer the shadows. Uh, so you kind of have to play with that to get the results that you want. Uh, I'm going to move this guy up a bit so it's not getting in our way. There we go. Let's take a look at Brutus. Uh, and that looks pretty good. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually start building the material. So uh, before we do that, we need, obviously, texture maps from Substance Painter. So let's move into Substance Painter and export. All right, once you're in Substance Painter, Control-Shift-D, uh, and I'm gonna be selecting, uh, I work with Unreal Engine 4, so I'm gonna make sure I'm exporting Targos, Unreal Engine 4, and by default, we get a base color, uh, ambient occlusion, roughness metallic, normal, and emissive. I don't need emissive because I don't have any emissive channels on him, so we'll only get three when we export. So I'm gonna go and make sure I'm working off my desktop or wherever you want, click on Export, and say OK. Now what I'm going to do is I do want to take a look at the uh, ambient occlusion uh, roughness metallic map real quick just to show you guys what's going on there. Uh, the red channel is obviously AO, green channel is going to be roughness, and uh, we've got the blue channel of metallic. Typically things are either dielectric or um, metallic, so this is kind of a mask. Um, the white areas are anything that's metallic, the black areas are anything that's dielectric. So, We've got those maps all exported. Let's move back into 3ds Max and let's begin setting up our material. Um, so what I want to do is I want to come into base color and I'm going to say general bitmap and we'll go to our desktop and find the base color. Double click the node to make it a little bit larger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the material and say show that in your viewport so we can make sure that this is being applied properly. Uh, that's great. So let's move that guy up. Next thing I'm going to add is my normal map. These are all really easy connections for you guys to, to make. So we'll go to general, bitmap, again, find that normal map. Plug this guy in. Uh, and that's looking great too. So I think at this point we're ready to just do a real quick test render to see how things are looking. And uh, yeah, that's what we we're getting. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is obviously he's looking a, a bit glossy. Um, so we haven't plugged in the roughness map, obviously, or the metal metalness. But my normals look great. I know I have a seam cutting right through here, and I don't see any seams in the render, so that's great. And obviously the bump's working um, perfectly. So 
Uh, let's go ahead and hit cancel and uh, let's plug that map in. Now we have to, we're going to be kind of creative with this. It's pretty neat. So let's go into roughness, go to general, bitmap, and let's grab that, uh, that multi-channel map. And if you guys remember, the roughness map, um, that is stored in our green channel. So I'm going to go ahead and ex uh, expand this and create a new uh, color correction node. And since we know that the roughness is in the green channel, let's turn all of these guys to green. And that looks great. So let's plug that into the roughness. And that looks pretty good. Now let's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and just move these down. And I'm going to plug this guy into the metalness. And obviously we need to come back to this node and change it all to blue. Since the blue, or sorry, uh, yeah, the blue channel. Since the blue channel is what's storing our mask for the metalness. Okay, sorry. Blue, there we go. All right, awesome. So that should work now. If we do a test render, we should see some metalness. We should start to see uh, the beginning of uh, our roughness working. So our eyes are much glossier than the skin, which is great. Uh, my metalness map is actually working, um, but you can see, guys, that the reflections are really boring, right? They don't look as interesting as they do, say, in Substance Painter. Look at those great reflections. Um, so at this point, what we want to do is, the reason those reflections are so interesting is because we have this, uh, we're using an HDRI map to light this in Substance Painter. So um, we want to do the same thing. So we actually have something in our environment to uh, reflect. So if we were to look at the metal parts here, you know, they're reflecting that black space that's behind Brutus. So just to show this off, if we hit eight, oh, let's cancel that bucket render. Uh, let's hit eight and let's change the color from black to a fuchsia and render. Now you guys are gonna see that fuchsia color really starting to take over in the metalness parts. You can start to see it a little bit on the areas that have some reflectivity, um, but it really is, is prevalent in the metallic areas. The dielectric areas, not so much. Um, all right, cool. So let's, now that we know that how that works, let's actually use that HDRI map. And uh, I just have a random one that I grabbed out of my repository, threw it on my desktop. You guys can go out and find them uh, basically all over the internet. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit open and okay. And now that HDRI map is gonna be my environment map and uh, instead of reflecting a black empty nothingness, which is 3D world there, uh, it's gonna reflect that HDRI map. Now, sometimes what I like to do is, is Max has been pretty good at this actually, um, but if we drag this in as an instance and we take a look at this HDRI map, we can tell it's set to environment and it's set to spherical environment, which is exactly what we want. Uh, so I'm just gonna hit delete and get that out of my material editor. Uh, it used to not default to that. But anyways, if we hit render now, you guys are gonna to start to see the, the roughness uh, or the dielectric areas and the metallic areas are actually, they actually have something interesting to reflect. <laughs> so this, this does look a lot better. And if you guys don't have anything in your environment, uh, your renders are gonna look terrible. So throw something in your environment slot, HDRIs work the best. It's really no reason not to use an HDRI, honestly. Um, Okay, cool. So that's working. Uh, we're at eight minutes or so. I'm going to try and speed this up a bit. Uh, now, one thing you guys will notice with that last render, um, the, the skin areas here are kind of glossy, a little too glossy. The eyes are very glossy too. Um, so what I'm going to do is we want to tone down. We want to tone down or actually, you know, since the, the darker areas here are going to be more shiny for the roughness. Um, we want to brighten this image up. So we could bring that in this texture into Photoshop and do it there. Or if we're smart, what we can do is we can go to maps and go to general and we can grab an output in the node and plug that guy into the roughness. Now this output node, we can play with our curves. So if we double click it, we can turn enable the color map on and use the monochromatic curve. Uh, we're not doing working with metallics right now, so we don't need to go into RGB. We'll, grab a point, plop it in the middle, right click, make it a smooth point, expand it out a bit, and then pull the curve up. And now we're brightening that image up. And now what we should see is we should see a model that's a little less reflective in the skin, and it should retain its uh, 
this reflectivity or glossiness in areas like the nose and the eyes, which it looks like it's doing just fine. Uh, so this looks a lot better and a lot closer to what I'm getting in substance, right? Let's go back and take a look. So we're getting there. We, we can tweak that as much as we want. I'm not going to sit here and tweak that and bore you guys. Uh, you guys can do that on your own time. Now, let's take a look at the material nodes. Cancel that bucket render. I'm not using the progressive render. Um, so something else that I've, we've got, the metal working great, we've got the roughness working great, we've got the base color working great, normal maps working great. Um, something that I've done in Substance Painter is I did bake a thickness map. And if I hover over this, you guys will see uh, the white areas are the thick and the black areas are the thin areas. So I wanna add some subsurface scattering to Brutus in V-Ray. So what we need to do is we need to come into Substance Painter, hit Control Shift E again, and I'm only after that thickness map. Uh, you can right click and say export resource, um, but I need to make sure it's a Targa. So I'm gonna, instead of using Unreal Engine, I'm gonna go to just additional maps and that's gonna export these guys right here. Those are the additional maps that we're using to bake. And those are plugged into your texture set settings. So you should see them in here. Those are on my other monitor though, obviously. Um, all right, I gotta change that back again. Um, additional maps. 2K is good, desktop, Targa, export. Again, it's gonna export all of them. Um, I'm only after the thickness. So I'll come to my desktop and I'm just gonna get rid of uh, some of those guys except the thickness. Throw these guys out. And there's my thickness. And we can throw that guy right there. Now let's go back into 3ds Max. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down to this uh, SSS color map. And I wish, uh, Oh, sorry, it's a scattering map is where we want to plug this into. So we're going to go to general, bitmap, and we're going to find the thickness map, which is right there. We're going to double click the sky and take a look. Um, this is a scattering map. And so let's go ahead and just, we, don't worry about the color yet, guys. We'll play with that in a second. But uh, the areas in white are the areas that the thickness map is affecting. And uh, you guys know uh, subsurface scattering is going to only affect areas that are thin. So we actually need to invert this map <laughs> to get it working correctly. So let's hit cancel and I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to grab this thickness map and um, I don't know, I wonder if we can invert it here. Maybe not, um, not sure. So I do know that we can go to maps and we can go to general and we can grab a output and we can plug that output into the scattering and we should be able to just click invert and boom. So we've just inverted that map. And uh, I'm going to move this normal map down a little bit so we have some space to play. Now let's go render and just double check and see, okay, things are looking good. Now we could play with the levels here as well. If we wanted to tighten up, uh, have less white areas, then we can do that. So let me cancel this render. And what we can do is in this output node, we can still play with our curves. So here, I think the goal is to add more white, or sorry, add more black into the scene. So let's do that. Is that gonna be an up curve? Yep, it is. So we'll just do the same thing. Bring that up a bit, hit Shift Q. And now you can see the subsurface scattering really is starting to get tighter towards those really thin areas. So that's a bit too tight for me. Let's bring it down just a little bit. I'm just gonna pop that curve up just a little bit. So there we go. And now we have this SSS color map. So I'm gonna drag that out and we're gonna be using a V-Ray. Sorry, if we're gonna to go to, yes, V-Ray, and then we're gonna come up to V-Ray color. And this color, we're just going to do something um, a little bit closer to red. Something like that should work, be great since his, co his color of his skin is uh, yellow. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. It's given me a really good subsurface scattering effect along the ears. Uh, and it's a, bit, it's a bit much, I think, right now. Uh, I'm not worried about the eyes or the teeth or anything like that. I'm just focusing on the skin. Uh, and so, you know, that, that's okay. So I'm just gonna bring that color closer to yellow. Uh, and there's a lot of other things you guys can do 
to get subsurface scattering working. I'm really not going to dive too much into SSS right now, uh, but I did want to show you guys how to set up the material node. So that's looking much better to me, and that looks great. Um, so we're left with uh, a really nice looking skin, but you guys can see the thickness is affecting the teeth. Uh, the collar, the medallion, uh, the nose, the eyes, we don't want it affecting those things. We only want it affecting the skin. Um, so at this point, I need to go back and I need to create a mask for this. Okay, so let's go ahead and cancel there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move back to Substance Painter. And what I'm after is this color map, um, which is we're going to convert essentially into a mask, or I can, uh, if I want to do this in substance, I can do this myself. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a manual pass. We're going to make the color pure white. And then I'm going to right click on this layer and I'm going to say add mask with color selection. We'll select the skin. And then below it, I'm going to create another fill layer. And that fill layer is going to be completely black. So that looks great. Uh, so now I'm actually, actually all I'm after is the base color. So why don't we go ahead and say Control Shift D. Let's export. Oh, I don't know. Let's go to back to Unreal Engine 4 is fine. I just want a base color. Uh, and so I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to create just a new folder temporarily. Call it whatever. Go in here, select folder and export. Okay. And now, if we go back to our desktop, we should grab that base color, which is this. And we're going to save. Actually, I don't even need to save that. I'm just going to drag that guy into my desktop. But I'm going to uh, rename this one. Sorry, it's on my other monitor. Um, I'm going to rename this one as SSS Mask. Throw that onto my desktop. And we can effectively delete that folder. So now we have a mask for the subsurface scattering. So we're going to do some more magic in V-Ray here. Uh, I'm going to select this material, hold shift, and I'm going to duplicate it down. Now this material down here, I'm actually going to be getting, uh, actually this original material I'm going to get rid of. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to get rid of all the SSS stuff. So this is the material without the SSS. This is the material with the SSS. And uh, what I'm going to do is we can move these close, a little closer to another. Uh, I'm going to drag this guy out. If I can grab it, it'd be nice if those scaled with your viewport. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to Materials, V-Ray, and V-Ray Blend Material. Okay. And this V-Ray Blend Material, let's go ahead and double click. And again, looks like it didn't want to use this. We'll use this guy as the base, and we're going to use this guy as Coat 1. Great. So what we're going to be doing is um, we need to add a mask or a blend right here. As they call it blend. It's technically just a mask. So blend one correlates to coat one. So I'm going to drag this guy out, go to bitmap. I'm going to grab that SSS mask. And there we are. So now that uh, it's basically what it's doing is it's masking this material with this material with that mask. So now we should effectively only get the subsurface scattering in the skin areas. And if it's kind of hard to tell, then I need to uh, increase that effect, almost blow it out. So let's go back to the subsurface scattering material. And let's make that guy just a bit more red and a bit more colorful or more saturated, if you want to call it that way. Um, so I'm not really seeing it that much. I'm going to pause the video and, and figure out what, what to do. All right, guys. So uh, you know what? I the, the thing that was giving me the error is I actually never applied the material. <laughs> uh, I still had the original material applied, and I didn't apply the new uh, composite material that I created in V-Ray. So yeah, I just all I did was do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel and just show you guys um, I had this material applied and I just needed to tell this material to be applied to the model. So uh, now we're getting some nice subsurface scattering going in areas like the ears uh, and the skin, but we're not getting it in the teeth anymore and we're not getting it uh, you know, in the eyes, which is important. And now we're getting this really gorgeous subsurface scattering effect going on with the ears. Uh, and I should have painted the nose out too. Uh, I actually didn't create a material ID map for that in substance. but 
I mean, hopefully you guys can see what that subsurface scattering uh, effect is doing. And it's great that we can grab that from the thickness map uh, inside of Substance.